Here comes Lester. Shall I try? My Lord Lester. Later. May I not present my friend, Hilary Vane? Later. Later, my lord, maybe too late. Mistress Cynthia, what have you lost? A pearl from the Queen's dress. Not here. I heard the Queen owned 3,000 dresses. Yes, sir. But she wants to wear the dress with the pearls. I say again, my lord treasurer, that we neglect the Queen's safety. There are plotters abroad. Why, even now, as I came down the gallery, I saw faces better viewed behind prison bars. Spare the sprat and catch the whale. Your pardon, Grandfather. Your pardon, my lord. The Earl of Leicester and I are in private converse, Cynthia. What is the matter? The Queen's killed us all because the Spanish ambassadors kept waiting, yet there she stands in her petticoat and will only wear the French dress. Well, why not let her wear the French dress, Mistress Cynthia? A pearl is lost from the back. From the back? Well, she won't miss it. You know, my lord, she has eyes in the back of her head. Yeah. Take it and be off. Oh. Everybody should always come to you first. I wish everybody thought so. If Drake had thought of coming to you first, should we be rejoicing at the good news? You cannot mean Drake's raid on Cadiz. I do mean Drake's raid on Cadiz. My lord, Lester, see, here lies England. But half an island, not 300 miles long, nor 200 miles broad. How small we are, how wretched and defenseless. Now turn to Spain, in the old world and the new. In the old power, in the new gold. Philip could build... Ten such fleets as Drake burned and never feel the cost. But if Spain sails across the bay to us and burns our shipping, how should we make it good? You are the Lord Treasurer of England? My treasury is empty. My lords, the Queen is entering the throne room. My lord, I lean only on my friend. Say, my lord. Your Majesty breaks faith with Spain. Ambassador, you forget yourself. My Lord Lester, it is you who forget yourself. The Spanish ambassador is our guest. Your Grace, we speak for England. Indeed, Your Grace, we do. Who dares to speak for England in my presence? Answer, my Lord Lester, do you? And you, my wise Burley, do you? Well, be silent then whilst I speak for you all. For I am England. And I am the voice of Spain. Continue voice of Spain. My master, His Majesty King Philip. Oh, he introduces me to my own brother-in-law. Reassure your master. My sister Mary, the late queen, was his loving wife. And for her sake, I am his loving sister. His portrait still hangs in a place of honor. My king does not ask your grace to hang his picture, but to hang his enemies. In the last month, English pirates have destroyed some 7,000 tons of our shipping. Names? What do I know of their names? They come and go like wasps, led always by the arch-pirate El Draco. <laughs> Sir Francis Drake sailed round the world, and I knighted him for it. Now he harries Spain, and I am to hang him for it. No. If I hang Drake tomorrow, 20 other Drakes would take his place. How can I hold them back when your king flings my honest merchants to the Inquisition to be burned alive? Your grace can at least forbid them to leave England. England is a large island with many ports in it. I will not sit at each in turn like a cat at a mouse hole. But I give Spain free leave to punish my Drake and his captains, if Spain can. Majesty. I say, my lords, if Spain can. <laughs> if your majesty will not hear words, we must come to cannon. And see if you will hear them. 
If you use threats of that kind, I will chase you out of my kingdom. But, Your Grace, you must listen. Must? Little man, little man. Must is not a word to use to princes. Our council shall confer with you. Meanwhile, go home and be quiet. Lester. <laughs> I have been too bold. Boldness was needed. If once the Spaniards think that we are afraid... Invasion. Night and day, drums in my ears. Invasion, invasion, invasion. I am afraid. So that is why you disavowed Drake. Disavow, you call it. That gentleman cares not if I should disavow him. It was privately agreed between us. I was not told. Must I tell you everything, jealous Robin? When we were children, I served you. When the Queen, your sister, sent you to the Tower... The Please, Philip of Spain. Still I served you and was trusted. But today, though I serve and love, I am not trusted. Do not deceive yourself. I know you love me and would risk your life for me. But these men risk more than their mere lives. Once they're caught, I cannot help them when they know it. Once they're caught, it is death by fire. But that does not stop them from dying for me. They still cry, save the queen. We're your prisoner, sir. It's a sort of holiday. That's right, dear lad. We are safe enough. Meager, is it not possible to spare the boy? I can do nothing. It's each for himself, sink or swim. Richard, you hear me? Sink or swim. Michael. You're the Queen's servant. Yeah, of course. I'm now going to give you her orders. 
climb up on the rail, dive, swim for shore. When you're on land, make for the home of Don Miguel. He will help you if he can. Leave you here, I'd rather die. I have friends in Spain. I'm safe enough. Once you're in England, go to the Queen. I will not leave you. Obey me, Michael. Downstairs in your night gear. Alice. Ah, oh, poor child. She had an English nurse and she's never got over it. A mannerless woman who opened all the windows. Father. Elena. They said you'd never get the shore tonight. Admiral. Don Elena, you must come back to your room at once. Please tell the servants to prepare a meal for me. But first, Don Yelena must retire. I'm not going back to bed yet. What did I hear you say? I'm not going back to bed yet. I want to hear about the fight. Let her remain, Signora. If you say so, Admiral, you're her father. But for the future, Signorita, remember this. A Spanish lady may retire, but she never goes to bed. Listen to me, Elena. You're not a child anymore. A child? When I'm going to be married in three months? The captain of the English vessel is Richard Ingleby. A friend. Long ago, in England. A friend from long ago. My best friend. And I have handed him over to the military authorities, and they will hand him over to the Inquisition. And you know what that will mean. Father. But he has an only son, Elena. I have reported him drowned. But I do not think that he is drowned. I think that he will reach the shore and come to us for help. What is he like? Fair or dark? Oh, he could pass for a Spaniard. And he speaks Spanish. So if he does come... But we mustn't help a heretic. Besides, Father, the danger... But nobody will know. But they will. I can give work to a beggar if I choose. Oh, he's only a boy, Elena. But an enemy of Spain. God. What is it? There's somebody outside. She always call you spirit, Grandfather. Continue. A letter from her desk, a cordial from her cupboard, and a message from her heart. Repeat the message. She says, I entreat heaven daily for your longer life, else will I and my people stand in need of cordials also. She is my cordial. She's vinegar to the rest of us. She gave me a cup this morning. Hmm? No doubt you earned it. 
I was only humming a tune. Michael's tune. But she ordered me off to you with those letters, and I was not to come back until you'd read them. Will you hear a Spanish lady how she wooed an English man? Garments gay, which was maybe she had on. Comely was her countenance. Oh, sir, does your gout trouble you, sir? Sir Richard Ingleby has been captured by the Spaniards. He is held by the Inquisition. There is no word here of Michael. Will you hear a Spanish lady how she wooed an English man? I said you could not do it. Now listen. Will you hear a Spanish lady how she wooed an English man? Garments gay, rich as maybe she had on. Uncomely was her countenance, high was her degree. Smiling, sighing, full of grace was she. Will you hear a Spanish lady, how she wooed an English man? How I jammed the Spanish lady. <laughs> Why do you want a fire? I'm cooking. What? A treat for you. What is it? They call it uh, a potato. It's a kind of fruit. It's very rare. Is it safe to eat? Father's eaten one. He says he never felt better in his life. You bake them, it takes an hour. I'm glad it takes an hour. I never see you nowadays. Well, I'm very busy. You forget I'm going to be married. Besides, you only think of getting home to your Cynthia. I expect she's married by now. She won't be. How do you know? I know. <laughs> what are you staring it's over Lisbon. What is? The smoke, look. It's so thick you can hardly see the roof. It's just smoke. Shoulders healed at last, eh? Yes, thanks to you, sir. Thanks to Elena. I gave you the hurt, she mended it. <laughs> Michael, I am to hurt you again. And this wound will not heal so quickly. Sir? I have a message from your father. At last! Where is he? Where is he? His last words to me were, it isn't our quarrel, it isn't the Queen's quarrel. It's a war of ideas. The boy will understand that one day. Tell him you can't burn ideas. But when did he say this to you? On my ship, the night you escaped. Then you have not seen him since? I saw him today. What did he say to you? He was gagged. Why? Did you not see the smoke, Michael, blow in from Lisbon Marketplace? An execution. <laughs> My poor boy. <laughs> Away from me! You Spanish devil! Michael! And, and you knew too. You let me talk and laugh. Why, my father? Michael! Keep away from me! 
If only you knew how I loathed you all. Your Spanish faces, your Spanish voices. And you've fed me, haven't you? And you've clothed me. You've made me your household pet, but you've burned my father. And I have to be grateful to you. Grateful. Oh, how can you? If you didn't know that you were still... Everyone shall know it. I'm going now to face all my father's face. But I haven't finished his message. He said, my son will hardly forgive me for deceiving him. <laughs> He'll never forgive you. <laughs> when his first grief is over, tell him... I that... cannot bear anymore! <laughs> Leave him alone. It's all you can do for him. We now come to the scandalous business of Drake's latest capture. Scandalous? I quote the Spanish ambassador, and I confess he may well complain. When the Spaniards of the New World sent home the St. Philip, the St. Philip, my lords, is the greatest treasure ship the old world ever saw, Drake captures ship and treasure and tows all home to Plymouth. Scandalous indeed. And now I have to report that the St. Philip has fetched in open market 114,000 pounds. Of which the Crown takes 40,000. 50. Write down 50,000. Your Majesty intends to accept this money? It should be more. Well, so long as the crew gets its share, 60,000. Your Majesty then returns the money to Spain. Return? We are not yet at war with Spain, but we shall be if we do not return this plunder. If Drake had not seized the St. Philip, the Armada would have sailed by now. But it has not sailed, my lord, and we are at peace with Spain. Either we disown the capture of the St. Philip or... Or? Your Majesty returns the money and hangs our good Sir Francis. Her grace shall not so humble herself. My lords, let us face facts. Why is the Armada being built to invade England? But if we strike now... I strike or be struck. If we strike first... We cannot strike. We have no fleet. Belly, you croak like an old raven. You and I have kept the peace 30 years. Who now teaches you to croak war? A young raven, new loose from the Spanish Ark. Well, young raven, you have not preened your feathers. He has sailed from Lisbon, your grace, in a fishing boat, single-handed. What is your name? Michael Ingleby. Where is my ship and where is your father? Both lost, your grace. How lost? By fire. Boy, your father was ever ready to love me and serve me. I am in grief for your loss and for mine. Gentlemen, give us leave for a little. Come. Madam, in Spain, they herd souls as we herd cattle. All men must be of one pattern and one blood. Spain is the prison of all freedom. Spain is horror. Spain is... Shh. But who will listen if you do not? You are the world's hope. My father said so. His last word to me was, tell the queen. Tell the queen, Michael. How can I? I thought I could once in Spain. I thought if I had but the chance, but home again. I cannot. How can you, Queen, here in free England, understand the danger? Tell me, Michael, how big is their armada? I could never learn the numbers. How many troops? No one knows. Their armada will consist of 132 ships. It will carry 20,000 sailors besides guns. Your Grace has made a fool of me. Oh, blame nature, lad, not me. <laughs> Will Your Grace give me leave to go? If you cannot endure to be laughed at, boy, how shall you endure a harder service?
Do you no longer wish to serve me? Tell me how. Well, first change your coat. It stinks of fish. <laughs> Thus we learn. Dearest, my darling. Mistress, this is my palace, not your private parlor. Lord Lester dines with me. Change my dress and my jewels now. Wrong shoe. The wrong foot, wear your thought skirt. In my head, madam. Crooked answers, crooked answers. Yes, madam. To cross questions. My wig. Do you like what you see in the glass? I, madam. How old are you? Eighteen. When I was eighteen, I was a prisoner in the tower. Fetch me the Earl of Leicester. And do not loiter. This mirror is old and blemished. Shall I fetch another, your drink? No, I know what you think. I, I think nothing, madam. You do, you do. You know that the Queen's face is blemished, not the mirror. Well, fetch me my disguises. I had forgotten. Me? That you were so beautiful. I too had forgotten. Me? But you were so tall. Such hollow cheeks. So haunted. Spain is a land of ghosts. But this is home. Home, Michael. gave the wench leave to mount my throne? And where is the Earl of Leicester? Madam, I forgot. Forgot? The state waits while a flaunting flippity gibbet sits in the Queen's seat and lets an impudent boy flatter her? Am I to wait your letters? Your Grace rates me till I do not know whether I'm on my head or my heels. You do not know? Your Grace, it was all my doing. <laughs> do not cry, Cynthia. Leave the girl alone. I'll teach you two to know me better. You've kept me waiting on your pleasures, now you shall wait upon mine. Go! Your, your grace. Go and be hanged! Your dear majesty has frightened two babes out of their little wits. The girl's a minx. But he... He's such a tall lad. As you were, Robin, when all the world was young. Most dear. Nay, my lord, springtime is over. What is your autumn wish? A signature. Well, I had less tame wishes once. They were never granted. 
And now you only wish for my 60,000 pounds to spend on Burley's fleet. Sign, most dear majesty. And you are safe against Spain. Well, see here, Robin. I have written out for me another paper returning the money to Philip. Without consulting the council? The council. But the boy's talk shook me. He is a handsome youth. You do well to be jealous. He is stronger than you. You are today. He is tomorrow. Lord Amley writes that you wish for a license to travel. Why? To see the world, my lord? What part of the world? Paris, Rome, Madrid. Why should I go to Madrid? Shall I tell you? I should be glad to hear. To give the King of Spain news of his English friends. Why, Mr. Vane, you have no colour in your face. Have you been ill? That's why my doctor recommends travel. Mr. Vane, that is not the reason. We know, because we have read them, that letters pass between you and certain Spaniards. There was no harm. Why should the King of Spain invite you to Madrid? Tell me why, and I will myself beg the Queen to grant your license. The Queen would be merciful to a man who confessed his follies and those of his friends. Come, be open with me. I will not cheat you. I have nothing to confess. I do not understand your lordship. Your application will be considered. Goodbye, Mr. Vane. Good day, my lord. Did you note that gentleman? Mr. Vane? Mr. Hilary Vane. It is very likely that he will try to leave the country. Your business is to prevent him. By force? If need be. But at all costs, he is to be taken alive. The French ambassador has arrived, my lord. Has the Queen returned from hunting? Not yet. It's late. Has she read my petition to rejoin the fleet? Do you think she will let me go? Why not? Because she likes you. Did you speak for me? I didn't dare. She still dance with me. Why? Because she likes you. You have learned not to loiter. Fools, can't you see that it's a woman? Who set you on to killing me? Which queen are you? There is but one queen, woman. There were once two cousins. The Queen of England and the Queen of Scots. The English queen put my Queen of Scots to death. Now I have no queen to serve. She's crazed or she would not dare. Give me the pistol. Unload. Let her go. They must stone me. Where are your friends? In France. You should be given safe conduct and money to take you there. Take her in your charge. Be content. No harm has come to me. You're out. <laughs> A 
alive, unhurt, almost dear. Let me sit down, Robert. Oh, Robin, a sin rose up at me, crying Mary of Scotland. No sin of yours. Her life was forfeit. I could have saved her, but I let her perish. Well, I pay for it. Five times, Robin, I have stood to be shot at. Yet still I live. Thank God your majesty is safe. Oh, your gout, I will not have you kneel. We use you not for your bad legs, but for your good head, a chair. The king of France will rejoice at your grace's most happy escape. My master also will rejoice that your grace's life was not in danger. Not in danger? The pistol was not loaded. But your grace's alarm is natural. A woman's fears. Four years ago, the noble prince of Orange was shot dead on his own doorstep. And I... I know of loaded pistols. And so your grace does he. Your majesty. Boy, be silent. Your grace, this Spaniard plots against you. Slander. Slander, then your own people slander you. In Spain it is common talk that England is full of traitors whom you have sworn to service. What service? Why, to kill the queen. Names? How could I learn names? But one day, your grace, the pistol will be loaded. And as the shot echoes across the sea to Spain, the armada will sail. And then there will be fire over England. Flames, torments. He is beside him. I am not. Then you are a fool and a hothead. Avoid my presence. Enough burning. You must forgive him, Your Excellency. His father's ashes have blown into his eyes and blinded him. You'd better get away as soon as you can. Mr. Vane, you're under arrest. You'll never take me alive! Well, what are you going to do? Why should I tell you? So that you can prevent me? I would rather have helped you. How the old love telling us what to do. I'm very tired. In a few years, I should be asleep forever. Why should I care what you young people do? Then why do you thwart and hamper us? I am an upper servant in an old house. So is the Queen. So is Lester. We have spent our lives dusting, polishing. Dull work. But we have learned to take a pride in the house. And our task in our old age is to train the new servants. The houseboys and the kitchen maids who one day will take our places. I wonder why we do it. We get no thanks. My lord, I, I did not intend... I cannot teach you to be a hero. I am only a servant myself. And service is too tame for you. Pity. My lord... Pity. Oh, go away. My lord... Oh, chatter somewhere else. Sir, grandfather, the queen is asking for you. You are to come quickly and quicker still. Will you take my arm, sir? I can still totter. There, grandchild, is the man who requires your support. You give orders. You give orders. You judge who shall be taken and who go free. By death, my lord, if you think to rule here, you will soon know better. Burley, Vane is dead. Dead? How? Killed in resisting arrest, but I gave orders. My orders that he should not be touched. But this fool takes it upon him to overrule my orders. Do you not understand, my lord, that we wished vain to visit Philip? And when he returned, stuffed with Philip's plots, then, then we should have taken him? Well, I was afraid for her life, I... Oh, I am assured of your dutiful thoughts. Did they get Vane's papers? No, he leapt over the boat side and the tide swept him away. Waste, waste, waste. Wherein have I failed? Robin, do you think that drowned fellow is indeed a traitor? I know it. 
I know a youngster who is no traitor. You don't understand. I understand very well. Young loyalty is asked to pay for everyone's mistakes. Well, I won't let you. Listen, if the Queen sends you home in disgrace, I'll come with you and be disgraced too. Dear and foolish. Why foolish? You love me, don't you? to be happy, Michael? Everyone, yes. That is why we can't be. The last time I watched a fire fall to pieces was the day my father. Elena and I were laughing. And then the smoke began to drift across the bay. Michael. Michael. Yes, dearest, of course we have a right to be happy. Husband and wife sitting by the fire, listening to the crackle. And thinking of what they did to him. I shall make you forget it. I shall. The smoke drifted right over us. And now it's drifting over England. Unless we stop it. Oh, Cynthia, help me to stop it. I'll help you. How? Come away, Michael. She would like you to come away, Michael, to your home and hers. And I do not blame her for dreaming. But it is not service. What is service? First, obedience. I will obey you. Then, Michael, give me what I want. I would give your majesty my life. Would you? Would you give me your silly young life? Dear me. Then I will tell you some news. Vane, who was on his treacherous way to Philip's court, is dead, but this is known to none. He was of your height, not much older. And I speak Spanish. Well, could you play Vane's part? It is madness. Why should he risk his life twice? Dearest, be quiet. No, let her speak. You love her. It is fit that you should ask her leave. I love her. But I will not ask any girl's leave to do what I must. Not if I order it. Michael. Michael, speak to me out of your own heart, not because she bids you. Must you go? If you are killed, Michael, there will be so many years without you. I shall grow old. Fifty years without you, Michael, think of it. Fifty springs, summers, winters. Must you go? Then you go with my free leave. Lord Burley will order your journey. Luck go with you. I have no more to say to you till you return. Where do you go? I do but seek some merciful corner to cry in. Cry here. The money and the license to travel. A license not granted to Hilary Vane. Who was on his way to Philip when he died. And took his secrets with him. Secrets? The names. We know of a plot against the Queen, but not the plotter's name. And Philip knows them? None but Philip. I will get those names. How? I do not know, my lords. But I know that if I do not get those names for you, I will never see England again.
Make up the fire. This hot April day. I am always cold. A cordial sign. No wine warms me. How many letters have I answered? Your Majesty has this morning written 40 letters with your own hands and dictated nine dispatches. I will continue. Sire, is it not time to rest? Not in this world. Who remains to be seen? Admiral Valdez, newly arrived from Lisbon. He awaits instructions concerning the Armada. Who else? Mr. Bain, from England. Admit the Admiral. Employ rigorous means. Only by fear can the people be made to... Admiral, I am satisfied with your report. And the Armada sails? A month from this day, if the Englishman confirms our hopes. Admit, Mr. Vane. Continue. Only by fear can the people be made to do their duty. Not always then. Your Majesty, on behalf of all your devoted adherents in England, I... I... Compose yourself. You are welcome to Spain. Get up and deliver me your letters. I am the letters, sire. We dare not commit our plans to paper. But Lord Amberley says here... Ah, but Mr. Vane, you must not interrupt His Majesty. Let him go on. I know the English. I only wish to say, sir, that my Lord Amberley wrote before the attempt on the Queen's life. What? It was no attempt of ours. A poor lunatic. Was the Queen hurt? Untouched. But there is now such watchfulness at court that we all, and my Lord Amberley in particular, favor a delay. More delays? Only until the Armada reaches the Channel. In the confusion, the Queen should be easy to attack. Wait. Now, sir, plan. Sir, in the audience chamber at Greenwich. I remember that audience chamber. All was drafty when the wind was in the east. Yes, sir. Because, sir, behind the tapestry there is a passage, walled up since the old king's day. But some of us have secretly taken down the brickwork. Some of you? How many of you attend the Queen? My Lord Amberley, always. And... and myself until a month ago. Has Sir Humphrey Cooper returned? Sir Humphrey's absence hardly affects the situation, sir. What is the plan? Why to spirit the Queen out of the palace by way of the passage? Where would you take her? To Sir Humphrey Cooper. Surely he lives in the north. Ah, but he has an empty house on the Essex marshes. The Essex marshes? It would be easy to send over a boat from Holland. I will consider your scheme. Count, I commit Mr. Vane to your charge. Accompany him to the governor's apartments and see to it that his stay with us is a pleasant one. Your Majesty, I must humbly thank you. Compose Walk yourself. Back. Well, Admiral? I do not understand these blunt Englishmen. I lived a year with Englishmen. I hated every one of them. And how it rained. But we must use the tools that Providence sends us, Admiral. Blunt though they be. It is a good scheme, sire. Yes. It is a good scheme. If he is honest. Your first visit to Spain. And my first view of the Escurial. Very impressive. But I shall inevitably lose my way in all these bewildering galleries and corridors. In that case, always ask to be sent to prison. Prison. Now we've alarmed him. As governor of the palace, my official quarters are, of course, connected with the prison. <laughs> so you see, you must be careful, Mr. Vane. Oh, I will. His medicine already made me shake in my shoes. Uh, what did he say? Compose yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Elena! Spain and England under one king. 
think of it. Oh, we do. All England waiting for salvation. All England watching the channel. Wait. That's it. Just waiting. Pedro. Admiral Valdez has just come. He's going to stay with us. He promises he will. <laughs> My dear Admiral. <laughs> oh, Don Escobar. Who is... My dear, allow me to present His Majesty's guest from England, Mr. Hilary Vane. My dear, talk to your guest from England. I... I want to talk to you. You come from home. My dear, how you do remind me of your father. You speak of Don Miguel de Cazan, Zabin. I didn't know that you met my father-in-law, Mr. Vane. I have heard his praises sung so often at home. He made many friends in England. It is hard for me to remember that now. Have I? My father-in-law was killed two months ago. Killed by English pirates. I'm deeply distressed to hear that. Are you? Why? You are English. Elena. I know no fuller vanity than this to kiss and hate to kiss and love, to kiss. Charming, charming, charming. Charming. Then you approve of our Spanish love songs. I find them disturbing. Our English songs are lighter. More heartless. That's a challenge. Am I to accept it? If you dare. Dare. As the holly groweth green and never changeth hue, so am I ever have been unto my lady true. But that's charming. Who wrote it? King Henry VIII. That monster who hated all his wives. How could he? But love often turns to hate, doesn't it, Countess? I dare say when it is rewarded by shamelessness. What's that you're playing now? One of our English ballads. They call it the Spanish lady's love. Will you hear a Spanish lady how she saved an Englishman? Come and scale, which as maybe she had on. Comely was her countenance, high was her degree. Smiling, sighing, full of grace was she. Will you hear a Spanish lady? How she saved an Englishman How a gentle Spanish lady Saved an Englishman <laughs> And now let me propose a toast Gentlemen, I give you the loveliness of Spain An ingenious toast It's wine water It's music It's women I had no idea an Englishman was so gallant. A thousand apologies. I have been with the king until this moment. Does his majesty ever stop working? Stop working? <laughs> Not to my knowledge. I shouldn't be surprised, Mr. Bain, if you found yourself on your way back to England before dawn. I have never known his majesty to decide a matter so quickly. You ought to be congratulated. There are few who succeed in harrying our prudent king. Then let us drink, gentlemen, to your prudent king. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. King. Prudence is, of course, a virtue that we English lack. You put audacity in its place? You despise audacity. It does it me once, but I have since learned to admire other qualities in a man. Such as? Unselfishness, consideration for others, all that is implied by... Uh, Prudence, my friends, 
drink to the prudent who think as the state thinks, who believe as the state believes, who love and hate with prudence, and die prudently when it is no longer safe to live, <laughs> and lie snug at last in prudent graves. Gentlefolk of Spain, I give you the prudent state, and may England... You can guess my wishes, gentlemen, for England. <laughs> yes, we guess your wishes. Ah, yes. Let us now drink to the success of our guest's mission. To the end of, of heresy. To the invincible armada. To the destruction of Elizabeth. You, you do not drink. My glass is empty. Oh, uh... To the salvation of England. Yeah. You've cut your hand. It's nothing. Helena. No, Mike. Helena, please. I must tell my husband who you are. You know I must. And the king must know. I can't let you betray Spain. I'm only fighting for my own people. And I for mine. Then why did you say nothing when we met? You had only to say this is Michael Ingleby, a runaway prisoner. Why did you keep my secret? I remembered you. Dear Mr. Lane. Why are they wars? Why must they be torn in two? It isn't wrong to be fond of you. Father. He was too. Darling. So I kept your secret till I could speak to you. But now I must give you up to them. Kiss me first. No. It's just goodbye. Last time we forgot to say goodbye. Goodbye. Mike. is coming. It's Pedro. Then tell him now. What could be more prudent? You are cruel. Helena. I've been enjoying the Spanish moonlight. So I perceive. The moonlight in this country is best enjoyed alone. Why have you left your guests? Answer me. What happened just now? You told me to talk to him. You said I'd been rude. Did I tell you to walk alone with him on the terrace? There was no harm. He was just saying goodbye. In private? Why are you so angry? I shall never see him again. Again? Where have you seen him before? Nowhere. Then why did you... You have seen him before. What is this mystery? Who is this man that you insult in public and yet in private you... No, no, Pedro, you're wrong. Well... I had a right. Give me the copy of Mr. Payne's instructions and the letters. Sir James Talton. Lord Illingworth. Sir Humphrey Cooper. Mr. Joseph Madison. Lord Amberley, and of course, Mr. Lawrence Gregory. Ah, Mr. Vane. Mr. Vane, you will leave for England tonight. Your Majesty. I have not finished. I have written for you the necessary letters of authorization. 
Ink is still wet. Sand it for me. Allow me. That is the sand. That the ink. Go back. Copy the letter again. In the meanwhile, I will outline for you the modifications I desire to make in your plan. Having secured the Queen's person... Your father must have been beside himself. An enemy he here... He wasn't an enemy. He was just Michael. We were fond... Fond of him. The wife of the governor of the palace has failed to disclose the presence of an enemy. Is the king going to say that she meant no harm? She, she was fond of him? I hope to deserve your majesty's trust. Trust? I do not trust you, sir. I do not trust any man. If the Count de Culminar is without, fetch him. But you have convinced me that you believe that your welfare depends upon obeying me. And you are right. I reward those whom I, within reason, trust. Upon your arrival in England, you will, of course, immediately get in touch with Sir James Talton. And? Uh, my Lord Amberley. Mr. Joseph Madison. And? Sir Humphrey Cooper. Lord Illingworth. And? And? Uh, Talton, Amberley, Madison, Cooper, Billingworth. And? And? My memory. He's my oldest friend. The name is on the tip of my tongue. No? God. <laughs> he will laugh when I tell him. And? Tarleton, Amberley, Madison, Cooper, Illingworth. Tarleton, Amberley, Madison, Cooper, Illingworth. And Mr. Lawrence Gregory. Count, you will place this gentleman under arrest. This way. She's known to have helped a heretic. It will never be known through me. You English fool, you'll be persuaded till you tell everything. We understand persuasion. Walk on. You forced me to choose between betraying my country or my wife. I'm obliged to help you. Listen. Your only chance is to escape now before news of your arrest is spread through the palace. At the end of this gallery, I'll hand you over to the captain of the guard. Then, without scruple, use your dagger. And be shot down for my pain. My dear Count, that will be very convenient. I regret the risk, but you must take it. If, I say, if you are adroit enough to escape in the confusion, it will be to my interest to create a confusion to delay the chase. Make for the stables. If you could secure a horse before the alarm is given, why, then you have a slender chance. Captain, you will escort this gentleman to the prison I shall examine him tomorrow. Adios, senor. Adios, Count. Captain. 
At your service, Count. If at any time the prisoner should show signs of plotting an escape, he's to be shot down. Understood? Understood. Serious. They're getting it under. I don't think we can do anything. Are you leaving us tonight? Yes, His Majesty has been most gracious. I was just about to try and find my horse. I've arranged it. Oh, thank you. I am to slip away as unobtrusively as possible. Oh, uh, naturally. Uh, but does His Majesty... Shh, shh, shh. Please. You can trust me. <laughs> thank you. I, I really am very much obliged to you. I should never have got away without your good offices. I'm surprised His Majesty hasn't assigned an escort for I prefer to travel lightly. Yeah, one likes to be free. Yes, and at the moment it is most essential to hurry. Yeah, we shall meet again in England. Yes, you will find us waiting for you. Thank you all. A very pleasant fellow. <laughs> As long as Michael is safe, and you are not angry. No, not angry, my dearest. But you must grow up. You see, Elena, the whole trouble comes from treating your enemies like human beings. Don't you see, my dear, that if you do that, they cease to be enemies? Think what that leads to. It's the end of patriotism. It's the end of war. It's the end of... of everything. How do you see? I see.
Well, my spirit, I come to bid you goodbye. I am for Tilbury. Your Grace should stay in London. Your Grace will not take my advice. I cannot. Nor the Council's advice. The Council is a pack of cowards. The army is at Tilbury, and Leicester writes me. Hey, listen. May it please you to comfort this army and people by spending two or three days in the camp. So now comfort me, Burley, and wish me good luck. Is this your supper? Not now, not now. Oh, why not now? Good English broth. Your Majesty's kindness. Keep your breath to cool your porridge. Come, one more spoonful. Now I must go. Take care of him, child. Your Grace. Your Grace, is there still no news? Of the Armada? My... I have no comfort for you. Do you think he will come back? I'm not Providence. But what does Your Grace think? I have seen blacker fears turn to hopes. Hope on till you know there is none. you all, to lay down for my God and for my kingdom and for my people, my honor and my blood, even in the dust. I know I have the body of a weak and feeble woman, but I have the heart and valor of a king, and of a king of England, too. Not Spain, nor any prince of Europe shall dare to invade the borders of my realm. Pluck up your hearts, by your peace and camp, and your valor in the field, we shall shortly have a famous victory. <laughs> Who shall keep my subjects from me? Well, loiterer. Majesty, the news from Spain. Come. Come. Mr. Gregory, summon to me here my Lord Amberley, my Lord Illingworth, Sir Humphrey Cooper, Sir James Tarleton, Mr. Madison, and return yourself. You have done more than well. You 
been asking to have. She knows everything. Everything. The debt will be faced out or to be run for it. Run where? Once the Spaniards land? She'll be hanged by then. You have done enough. Not while the Spaniards are in the channel. You said ask and have. Let me join the ships. Your Grace, the gentlemen are waiting. Your place is with those others and you know it. Go. What is wrong here? Robin, I need your sword. My sword? Yes. Here in my hand. Near a micro. Rise up. Rise up, Sir Michael Ingleby. You're crazy. You're crazy. I raise up and I cast down. Wait here. Words will not come. You know that? She is. She is. She is the queen. The greatest joy of my lifetime has been to serve her. And so will you find it. So says. You have plotted to kill me. Well, here I stand and you still wear your swords. Men use them better. What let the King of Spain call you servants when I call you sons? Your Grace. Aye, sons, though your lives are forfeit. How will you die? In sunlight or in darkness? For a free world or a world where your thoughts are rationed like prison bread? Choose, for the enemy is upon us. God save the Queen! God, God save, save the, the Queen! queen. Sir Michael Ingleby, come here. Michael, I will give you a command. You shall fight fire with fire. And these men shall fight under you for their soul's salvation. Gentlemen, dear Michael, if you took seven little ships and tarred them and piled them with firewood and so sailed out single-handed against the greatest fleet the world has ever known, if you took not swords in your hands but torches... <laughs>
didst blow with thy wind, and they were scattered. next time. No next time. The armada is scattered to the four winds. Now the bells begin to ring. Oh, your grace must rest. No time, Robin. For now come the rewards and the nightings and all the happy people. And the blind who will never see again. And the maimed men. And the men with youth gone out of some have a little youth left. Listen to our wedding bells. From the woman's point of view. Every steeple in England rocks with joy. And my granddaughter says it's because I'm getting married. So at last they are to marry. I allow it. They shall not stay at court. I'll have no married folk at my court. Yet I'm a married man. Oh, fool you. You may go. And come again? Come and go. We come. Is old and tarnished. I will have no more mirrors in any room of mine. My loving people, let us give thanks. Almighty God, Almighty God. Father of all mercies, Amen. we thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks. Mm -hmm. 